had the feeling that I wanted to make the music as sound like it was coming up from the earth, as if rising out of the grave. Was this this guy speaking to you from under the ground? And I, I just had this the sound in my. It came, you know. It's it's a very simple thing, but I just wanted to. I wanted to have a bottom that just sat, but also had that sort of that feeling of you know sh- a little bit of a a buzz in it, a shake to it, and I just I heard I heard the uh, a fourth, and and this I just you know imagined a, a voice declaiming. In memory of Mr. John Wood. The piece, it's non-narrative because I don't have their stories. I, I have a, a, an epitaph on a tombstone. I have these letters that are carved into stone. You know, you have to feel them with your fingers sometimes just to read them. Or you have to, lay, you have to sit there, sometimes laying on your stomach on the ground, um, waiting for the sun to come around so that the shadows will be cast slightly differently on the letters and you can you know, puzzle out what that one letter is in that one word to complete your sense of what it is. Um, so this, everything's distilled like a poem down to this one short epigram about a human life. So it's not a narrative. It's the, I wanted to write a piece where the, this poem that you're presented with on the stone and the sense of, your experience, of my experience of it in the, in the experience of you know, laying there, reading the tombstones, feeling them, um, was brought together into sound. I've been spending time in cemeteries for a long time. Um, when I was in college, I went to school in Bowling Green, Ohio, and the cemetery in that town is one door up the street from the School of Music. And, you know, honestly, I was a little overwhelmed as a freshman in college with the, you know, not having any private space all, and living in a dormitory with the noise and the people moving in and out and the loud music. And the cemetery for me at that time became a real refuge. Um, just the, a place where everything is still and it, they are places of great beauty. It shifted my feeling about what a cemetery was from being a place filled with grief to a place of great beauty and peace. And I guess I started making a meditation of how lives appear and disappear and taking real comfort in the fact that when you read the tombstones and you see these stories about, you know, you'll see a family who've lost, for example, three children in five years, and you think you can imagine the tremendous pain and grief, and yet a cemetery is a place where all the sufferings of human life are resolved into stillness. good place to confront my own mortality and really put life into perspective. While I was writing, in a way, the pieces about a certain time period, all the people who died on the gravestones that I chose to set were between 1788 and about 1855. So it's about the past, but it's written in the present. And it's conceived to communicate with people that are profoundly here now. <laughs> 